Hi, I've literally just landed at Dating Airport and in today's episode we have got a ton of awesome stuff to get through. First, I reckon you and I head over to the local oil fields in Daqing and then after that we could probably experience the local delights in Chi Chi Har. Following that, I reckon you and I deserve to go and experience the beautiful wetlands and nature reserves so famous in this part of Heilongjiang province. I'm Gareth Edwards, welcome to Travelog and welcome to the Heilongjiang series. China's gigantic transformation into an emerging superpower can be attributed to many things. However, few places in China can lay tangible claim to being one of the main catalysts of that change. One of the few is Daqing. It's in this northeast Chinese city that the country's largest oil field was discovered in the late 50s, ending a period of Chinese dependency on foreign oil and forming the basis of incredible economic growth, which continues to this day. Where there's oil, there's money, and where there's money, there's luxury hotels. So if you're not on the shoestring budget, I think you can have a pretty luxurious time here in Daqing. But for me, Thanks, Travel Log. Well, there's another one. These oil pumps are all over the place in Daqing. But here I was pleasantly surprised at how this is some of the freshest air I've breathed in in a long time. Uh, and one of my friends who lives here just told me how hundreds of millions of RMB are spent to reduce the pollution out here. You can actually feel it. When you think of oil drills, your mind probably doesn't automatically think of clean air. Well, there are some surprises in store for you. Wow, this is a pretty strange sight indeed. To my left, you've got the city, you've got the cars and traffic, right? And right to my right, you've got a proper massive oil pump. And if you're anything like me, who's never been to an oil well before or seen one of these drills before, this is quite a sight indeed. And I'll tell you what, you don't have to go to the Middle East to go and find your oil well. You can just come right here in Daqing. Pretty amazing. Let's go and check out what these guys get up to. Come on. The oil workers of Daqing are not the typical oil workers you might see on television or in the newspapers. There's no travelling off to distant lands or spending one month on and one month off some oil rig in the middle of the sea. Here, being an oil worker is seen as something of a prestigious job and the workers lead fairly relaxed lifestyles. Hey,你好 now what I find absolutely mind-boggling is that right there you've got a school and over there you've got a residential complex and to my left you've got streets with cars going by and smack bang right in the middle of this you've got this huge drill, the newest drill in Daqing and for me it's quite hard to reconcile which one does come first, the oil or the city and I actually think they prosper together, pretty amazing stuff. In 1960, Chairman Mao decided that China should no longer rely on foreign oil supplies and decided to step up domestic production. A team was sent to an untapped field in Yumen. The team worked through fatigue and injury over many days in diabolical conditions, in temperatures dropping as low as minus 30 degrees, before finally striking oil. There is a person in Daqing who is famous and important to the Chinese people and also to the Chinese oil industry. And this building was built in memory of him. 53 years ago, the first oil field was discovered in Daqing. And 20 years later, Daqing was created literally from scratch. And if you think about it, it's literally because of Wan Jingxi and his merry group of hard-working men behind him that the Chinese oil industry was created. And they were also the first people to settle in this great city and make Daqing what it is today. 
pretty awesome. Wang Jingxi was born in 1923 to a poor family in Gansu province. He worked as a shepherd and a coal carrier before starting work in the Yumen oil field in 1938 at the age of just 15 years old. Here, he would form part of the famous number 1205 drilling team that helped change China's future. In recognition of the team's exploits, Wang Jingxi was honoured by Mao Zedong, who referred to him as a pillar of the industry. He was nicknamed the Iron Man for his great strength and perseverance, becoming a symbol of the working class in the new China. It's here that you can just see just how difficult the circumstances were for them. And if you think about it, back then, it was incredibly tough circumstances. They didn't even have any technology and they were doing all of this manually. And if you compare that to today, I mean, you've got drills and, and the technology in China is the most advanced in the world. It's pretty mind-boggling stuff. To some, it's simply the Daqing Ore Museum. To others, the Daqing Oilfield Science and Technology Museum. But whatever you choose to call it, make sure you head over to this vast exhibition area because it's the largest science and technology museum in the whole of China. There's plenty of things to see here, but a personal highlight was reliving the exploits of Wang Jingxi and his amazing drilling crew. In one instance, to save an oil well that was on the verge of exploding, Wang jumped into the oil and with his bare hands started digging. Inspired by this, the other workers jumped in and the well was saved. Now that's what I call employees of the month. Dachin 